Meantime, at least 21 people have died and millions are facing power outages for a third straight day as historically cold weather puts pressure on the region's energy infrastructure. The breakdown in the nation's energy capital has sparked growing outrage and demands for answers. Brian Sullivan has some of them this morning, and he joins us now. Brian. Well, Andrew, I, I hope I have them, by the way. Uh, and listen, right now, first off, still exceptionally cold. Three million people in Texas as of the latest, latest numbers from PowerOutage.us still without power and more snow and cold are on the way. So at the very most basic human level, it's a scary situation. There are people who have actually frozen to death over the last 24 hours. Just a terrifying situation. We need to get the power on. Okay, so what has happened? You know, there's still a lot that we don't know, but there's a lot that we are learning. First thing first, number one, looks like the state was just unprepared for the storm severity. Some of the weather forecasts last Thursday predicted a storm, but not this bad. And so when you prep for a certain storm coldness, you say, well, we're going to need X amount of energy because the predictions of the storm were apparently so far off. The energy demand needs, or at least estimates, were far off. Factor that in to lower inventories. Inventories were not low, but they were obviously less than they needed. So you had natural gas. Texas is a state that primarily relies on natural gas to fire its power plants. If you don't have enough or enough in the right place, you're not going to be able to fire those plants. Also, no power. You can't use a well or pipelines. This is an electricity system. Many have backup generators. Maybe the generators weren't operating because of the cold. If there is no power, you can't do a lot of the things you need to do to get the resources to where they need to be. And of course, other infrastructure like the wind turbines, like some of the solar were frozen as well. All in all, guys, the finger is being pointed a lot of places. But what it looks like is this terrible, toxic confluence of all these different factors. And of course, now you've got these prices that have soared on the spot market to add insult to injury. If there's people out there that subscribe to these, you know, you pay what we pay type wholesale energy services uh, like a Gritty or some others, um, and your power has remained on, you might have to, a, a, a just massive bill because these companies are having to go in the spot market to buy energy, which as I showed you guys yesterday, there was at least tr one trade done at 8750 per megawatt hour, 8750, the normal price would be about 70 bucks. So there's so many parts of this story and a long way to go. Brian, let's talk about the, the, the human piece of this, which then of course relates to the economic piece of this is, you know, if you were to look at the next 48 hours, what, what do you think it looks like? I mean, how quickly do you think that this, some of this can get resolved in any way at all? It's not an easy question. So the storm is coming. There's another storm coming, Andrew. Bill Karens of NBC, we had him on Worldwide Exchange. He said that. So bad weather remains. So you're not going to get a natural thaw, if you will, just from the weather. About a million fewer people have power or more people have power now than at this time yesterday. If you're trying to find any kind of an upside, 4 million out of power 24 hours ago, about 3 million. So you are seeing some more grid activity. A lot of attention has been focused, of course, on this ERCOT, right? Not EPCOT. ERCOT, Electri Electric Reliability Council of Texas. Not a lot of reliability in the R. Um, and where their role is in moving power around. A lot of discussion, Andrew. And you see screenshots of, you know, wealthy neighborhoods have power. Poorer neighborhoods don't. And the other factor is this, which I didn't even think about, Andrew, is these homes in a lot of these places that are normally hot are actually not built with winter in mind. And so the stuff we take for granted, you know, insulation, Owens Corning, all that pink stuff, a lot of them don't have that or don't have very much. They're built to actually try to stay cool when it's really hot. Um, the state's power demand was higher than the peak of summer when everybody's cranking their air conditioning. It just sounds like unpreparedness factored in with a massive storm and a toxic brew. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.